Hello, Jesus is giving some wisdom now, but you might notice that he's already said a lot of this stuff. That happens a few times, and it always means that it's important. We're starting in Luke chapter 17. Jesus said to his disciples, Things that cause people to sin are bound to come, but woe to that person through whom they come. It would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around his neck than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. First, he talks about the discipline a parent and all adults really should give to children. They have to lead by example. That's really important. If a parent steals, does alcohol, or something or another, I don't think it's surprising that the kid would turn into a bad seed. Maybe someone will cause them to sin, but don't be one of them. It almost seems like it's worse to cause someone to sin than to sin yourself. That doesn't excuse our personal sin, but trapping someone in sin is bad. And we shouldn't think that this only applies to kids. Don't cause anyone to sin. And the best way of doing that is to not sin yourself. So watch yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times comes back to you and says, I repent, forgive him. Rebuking is an interesting thing. It's like scolding someone, but it's supposed to be more righteous. So if you see someone sin, first you have to realize that you are in the right and they are in the wrong. You have to educate yourself on God's word in order to even think about approaching them because your definition of right might not actually be right. And I believe that the term brother is important here. We are to only rebuke fellow Christians. I guess because the reason we need to be better people is because of Christ. If someone doesn't follow Jesus, then they don't really have a reason to be a better person. Rebuking will only work if someone is convicted by the Holy Spirit. Then they have cause to repent. And then he basically says that people will fail to be better people, but that doesn't mean that we don't have to forgive them anymore. He says, even if he wrongs you multiple times a day, you should still forgive him. The apostle said to the Lord, Increase our faith. He replied, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. It says the apostles asked this, not disciples. This is because Jesus had built up a large amount of disciples at this point, but some maybe weren't as committed as the original twelve. And that might be important, because it's good to know that even his most loyal disciples had questions. Or, I guess here it was a statement. They thought that faith was based on will. That's actually kind of the power of a superhero. Green Lantern. He can construct things with his will, and the stronger his will is, the better his constructs are. But Jesus says that his faith is not like that. It only takes a minuscule amount of faith. Mulberry trees have massive roots. Uprooting it is hard, and so Jesus is saying that the smallest faith can accomplish the biggest things. Suppose one of you had a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Would he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, Come along now and sit down to eat? Would he not rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready, and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. Would he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. That's very difficult for me. However, I hope I'm not twisting the verses, but I do believe Jesus is talking about something specific here, not a generality. This is only the case with God. We do not need to stop working for God, and we do not need thanks from God, because he is the good master, the one and only. Because of that, we should want to serve him. This is different from other masters. The others suck, so we aren't expected to want to serve them, but God is good. So that should motivate us to do his work with a happy heart. Now, what is his work? Well... That's a long list, and that's why we're going through it, so hopefully you have already learned through the previous passages. Thanks for listening, guys.